Have you ever heard of curb roasting? If not, this is your chance to know about it. But did you know that this is an attack, that it's not actually an attack? Because it just exploits a feature of the Kerberos authentication. By the way, if you don't know what is Kerberos, how it works, and the attack techniques related to it, check out the first video of the Attacking Active Directory series. And in this video, we will explore what is Kerberos, how it works, and practicing this attack techniques on a Hack the Box CTF. Let's get started. So if you have not seen my video where I have explained the Kerberos protocol, I recommend you to go and watch it so you can follow along with me in this video. Now, Kerberos thing is not an actual attack. What we do is just exploiting a Kerberos feature, but it's much more realistic to find it on real world. And as always, before we dive into the attack, we need to take a moment and explain some basics that we should have so we can understand how Kerberos thing works. If you have watched the video where we explain the Kerberos protocol, we said that the authentication mechanism used on Active Directory is usually Kerberos. And the way it works is, let's say you are Ahmed Hamdan, and you want to authenticate or access your account over the network. You are a domain user, you have your password, so you will send a ticket to the KDC. And we have explained that before. Please watch the previous video if that seems weird for you. So you send a ticket that contains some information about you. And the whole ticket, as we said in the previous video, is encrypted with your password hash. That's cool. Now, because your ticket is legit, the KDC will decrypt it, check if everything is correct, and then send you back a TGT. So you have a TGT, and you can request a TGS ticket, a service ticket that is encrypted with the service account password hash. And that's basically the attack. Now, as we said before, to request a TGS, a service granting ticket, you need to have the service principal name of that service, the ESPN. And as we said before, the ESPN is a unique identifier for a service running over the network. For example, let's say you have uh, an SQL service running and we want to connect to it. Now, to be able to do that and tell the domain controller that we are requesting the SQL service, we need to have a unique identifier for that service. It's like an ID for it because there are multiple services running on the domain, so how can the DC knows which service you are exactly looking for? So this is the utility of SPN. Now, we can continue the protocol process. We have a TGT, we have the SPN of the service, so basically you're gonna request a, the TGS, and the KDC will return the TGS. It's gonna be uh, encrypted with the uh, service or the user password hash, and Curve Roasting now is basically trying to decrypt this TGS and get the user password. Now, let me show you exactly how that's work on a live demo. So we're going to use the get users spn.py script from the impacket script. And as we said before, to perform this attack, we need to have a domain user credentials with no special privileges because any domain user can perform this functionality of reading the SPNs of the user's accounts if they have it. So let's run git user spn.py with specified domain, which is egotistical-bank.local. By the way, this is the same box that we have we used before to demonstrate all attacks of this uh, series. And then we specify the user, which is fsmet, and the password, which is the stroke 23. We add the dash k flag to use Kerberos authentication. Let's hit enter. And as you can see, there is nothing on the output because there is no curb roastable users or user services. So let's create a user that can run a specific service, for example, Hisham SVC. So this is just my name. Let's consider that it's running a service. So I am RDP to the box, and this is the domain controller. And let's go to Tools, Active Directory, Users and Computers, and go to View, Advanced Features, to see additional Active Directory objects that are not visible in the default view. And let's go to see the users. So this is fsmit that we use to run the git user spn script. And let's create a user called Hisham SVC. Set the password. That's cool. Now let's run the script again. And as you can see, we didn't get anything. Because this service, which is Hisham SVC, doesn't have an SPN, a unique identifier. So let's go back and set an SPN for that user. Let's go to properties and attribute editor, look for service principal name and edit, and then we're gonna set a service principal name for that service or for that user. This is the format of the SPN. We specify the user that runs that service and the domain Hisham SVC 
slash egotistical dash bank dot local. Hit apply and OK. Now let's go back and run our script again. As you can see, we got the Hisham dash SVC user in the output with his own SPM. Now to get the TGS of that user, we need to add the request flag. So let's do it. And as you can see, this is the hash encrypted with Hisham SVC password hash. Now what we need to do is just try to decrypt in it using hashcat. So as always, we specify the mode dash M, the hash and the word list. Hit enter. And as you can see, the password is password with the zero. Great. So that's basically curve roasting. Not a real attack, but there is a big percentage that you're going to find it in real world than other types of attacks. That's the video. Thank you for your time. I hope you enjoy it and you learn something new. If you did, please subscribe and uh, like the, the video so we can make more uh, valuable, great content. And uh, thank you for your time.